So, the General Assembly declared March 21st as World Down Syndrome Day in December of 20, 2011. <clears throat> now, the day spreads awareness and support for those living with this disease, um, Down Syndrome. Uh, this is a very special day. You know, it's interesting um, if you've been around people, mothers that have kids living with Down syndrome, you would know that. Ah, you know, so, so I have a particular woman that, you know, it's my neighbor, my place of business, and she has a son that has this Down syndrome. It's, it's a lifetime project. It's a lifetime project because these children can't, they technically cannot do anything without, An you assistance. know, without assistance. You know, so it's a lot, it's a lot. I, I, it takes a lot of grace and patience to be able to manage them. So if there's anything that I would like, you know, for the government to start to do, really, there are children that have this particular disability, and I know that any form of support, you know, would help. So um, I have a friend a friend's brother that the child has um, cerebral palsy in Nigeria they used to hide that girl in their room and all of that but the husband got a job that's her brother got a job and they relocated you know outside of the country and the kind of reception the kind of attention the kind of love yeah it is because of the same girl that they were hiding in Nigeria. Do you understand? The Thank attention, you. the government, I mean, they, they changed, they brought in specialized bed. They came to her room, they set up her bed. She has specialized bed. She has nurses that come to take her for, what's it called, um, to, to go for swimming classes, different kinds of activities. And guess what? The condition has completely improved from when she was in Nigeria. You know, these kind of cases that you think is hopeless and all of that. Yeah. But these things involve money. Because if they tell you how much the government is investing Into on those children, you'll be shocked. You know, but because they pay, a, um, you know, some premium on health insurance, it covers all. Because if you wanted to pay through your nose, trust me, something you can never afford. Yeah. You know, so I understand that, you know, some of this... Um, children with these kinds of disability, you just need to put them in a different environment. They would improve. They'll continue to... So it's just that it's at a slow pace, but they would improve. So instead of just, you know... Aside, yeah, go ahead, Isi. Aside from that, Usain Wame, the thing is, we in Nigeria, based on our culture, our, our beliefs, we tend to disregard and disrespect these children with Down syndrome. We have totally... Ignore the fact that these children are experiencing the disability based on the fact that it is a genetical disorder and it's not something that they can actually help, you know. And we have done this in a way that we have we have shielded them in such a way that we have disregarded them in the society. Mm. That's why the child who was taken abroad was given that attention and given that. Uh, uh, environment to bloom. Mm. Now, we also come back here in Nigeria, we have done it in such a way that um, the lifespan or expectancy uh, of these children are quite... Um, it's not only the children, it's, it's yeah. everybody. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but especially for these yeah. children. I'm actually talking about Down syndrome. Mm. So, for these children, it's actually short mm. in comparison to those their counterparts who are living abroad. And their so counterparts living... Abroad, absolutely. Nigeria. And their counterparts living abroad can actually... You see them do a lot of things. Yeah. You know? Exactly. We have... we have. I even saw uh, somebody who was... Uh, a few people who were actually famous. And they're actors. They're models. And they're actually blue... Living with Down syndrome. Yes. Basically, yes. Absolutely. But we do not have something like that in Nigeria. We've not mm. even taken care of those who are able and well fitted not to talk of those who are not um, that are disabled in one way or the other absolutely i to completely agree with you honestly so we can actually do better all right ng your story for us so my story in the news today is the fact that um funky akindele deletes 
some or all of her politics related posts from Instagram. So um, story going out today is that the deputy governorship uh, candidate of the uh, PDP, which is the People's Democratic Party in Lagos, Funke Akindele, has, after the just concluded elections, deleted um, posts on her Instagram page related to politics and PDP. And, you know, um, this is an, a public figure who has about 15.7 million followers. And I know that during the election, uh, during the campaign and election season, there was a lot of um, talks. You know, she actually came out on, on under, during, the, under the party, under the, the party, mm -hmm. to say you know her followers were going to back her up for her campaign and all that, and they were going to come out and vote. And I know that it was a little bit. The election turned out a little bit differently for PDP where um, they were not able to meet up, and I think they came a distant third. And um, so um, it's, it's just funny. When I saw it in the news, I was just um, wondering what could, what could have come, um, gone through her mind to come to such conclusions. Is it that she had ended, decided to end her political career in general and going back to the entertainment world, or she was taking a break but you know, people do. I, me, I delete tweets. I mean, posts now. Yes, we all delete posts. Mm -hmm. But when you delete a post, um, but did you monitor her page through and through? She never really posted a lot, like yeah. somebody that was really ready to win an election. If she was leveraging on her social media handle, correct me if I'm wrong, because I know You're that not. at some point she had to take a break from politics. She was promoting the Buka movie. That yeah, her the Buka movie Street that movie. came out. Yes. In the in the heat of campaign, she was still promoting. So I mean, she re she never she she rarely posted a, enough. As far as I was concerned, if you if you compare her to other celebrities that you know were running for offices, you would see daily posts, different things, and all of that. She rarely did post, you know, about the the campaign. And so, for me, it comes surprising I mean, because it's not from a place of the fact that you're not into social media. You know, this is someone so who is yes. a social media person. Um, person and I believe know. that the choice of her as a deputy candidate was based on, you know, the supposed assumption that, oh, she had the... Because, followership you know, the kind that. of followership that she has was more of the people like, you know, the Ali Mosho, in the Mushi, yeah. you know, a lot so of those, it was, those who that, that support her, her, prog uh, her, yeah. her projects, right? So, I mean, that, I, I believe that that was part of what informed the choice of her even being selected as a deputy candidate, right? So, I mean, it's, it's, for me, it's not, a, it's not a big deal because I didn't even really see that she was really serious about winning that election. Both candidates in the PDP. The only person that I actually saw that was really ready for the election, that was running to win the election, was the Labour Party candidate and the governor himself, the APC candidate. So they were, they were a no-brainer for me. So it, wasn't, it didn't come to me as a surprise. Hmm. I don't know why it's even making news. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, so my story today is about some disgruntled Nigerians destroying their international passport on Instagram. I would like for them to play the video. Mm. Um, to me, it doesn't make sense, but let's see. Where's our video? Nigeria is a state. Nigeria is a nation. Telling Igbos to go back to their to where they come from. Are you people? Are you are you all? Are you all? Nigeria is a state. First of all, um, when I saw this, the first thing that came to my mind was I think there, there are lots of mental people, you know, that are just going around as normal human beings. Because you're not even in Nigeria. We that were here, we've not turned the passport. So what are you trying to, to say? If the authorities should come and arrest you now because you're defacing um, 
a, 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 I don't even know the word to explain it, but I don't think that is something that is right to do. I don't think an American or a British citizen can do this online, like even when they were mad about policies, it's just not right. Why do we have to be different? Why do we have to embarrass ourselves in public? Like, what is this supposed to mean? And I think from the second one, the second um, person who tore his passport is clearly expired because I could see the punch from the immigration, which they do. So I don't know what point you're trying to make or what kind of attraction that the person Both passport is not even... Then we have a new... Um, in book in, 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 um, right. Design what international right? passport. Um, it's, 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 it, I agree totally with no, Mary. It really doesn't make sense. Why? Because, first of all, you're outside the country. That's the only reason why you would do it. Because maybe you have a second passport. So that's fine. You can decide you're not coming back to Nigeria, but you have family here. So, and you have some of those passports is not what they will use yeah, to travel. That's it's just about living people. So, you're still going to come here and you're still going to come back to this country. So, does that mean you ripping apart your passport? Does that mean you're not going to make it's it down okay. here anymore? This matter, we're going to deal with these diasporan people because I have a lot of bone to pick with them. Because you talk, you incite, you're not in Nigeria. Literally, I was in a tweet space one time and I heard somebody saying, go on the street, go occupy. Occupy what? Have you not seen that, um, what's it called, um, um, protests and all of those things don't work? Occupy what? You're sitting in, 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 in somewhere outside of the country and you're busy commanding people to go occupy what? I will pick their board later, not be today. This is for another day. Easy, please, what's your story? Why does not occupy? <laughs> just come over. Then we'll teach them what happened in their stars again. You know, um, mine is a follow up story and it's on from Karen Kindele deleting the tweets again and her pictures online. Yes, it's making the news because the brother or the colleague <laughs> in, uh, in, uh, in uh, the industry has actually called out to her and asked her why she deleted her pictures. Um, you know, Yula Doce actually had a stint in politics. Um, I think it was in 2017, and in the process, uh, he was um, um, campaigning for the gubernatorial election in Anambra State at the time. And I think he has an idea of what Funke and Kindele must have gone through during this whole uh, political cacophony. And she wants a situation, he wants a situation whereby she can actually look at it from another perspective. And um, there was something from Kindele also said earlier. She said that she doesn't uh, regret actually going into politics, that she has learned a lot in the process. And you know, it also calls to mind the, the thing she's uh, that um, the saying that says, um, "Never stop learning because life never stops teaching." Because she has done this and she has learned a lot. She had she has uh, been able to understand the political atmosphere, and she has made had that decision to actually delete her post. But here, you you the Doce is actually telling her to you know to keep the scar or the experience and not delete it. I would say, yes, I agree with you, Ledoche. You know, everything you go through in life is something that will take you to the next journey. It yes, in another, maybe in another um, um, four years, she can actually contest for the election and probably she might win. It depends on the party she decides to go for. <laughs> they caught you. It was a cut. So that some <laughs> ray of um, what's it called? As far as I'm concerned, this is some ray of um, good oh. <clears throat> that yeah. came out from this all this yeah. campaign. Because I remember that the <laughs> Labour Party candidate kept on happening increment of uh, what do you call it? Civil servants salary, salary increment of civil servant salary. He will increase civil servant salary. So to so our governor Babajide Sanwolu has increased civil servants salary by 20 percent and now according to the head of service Hakim Muri Okonla the increment took effect January 2023 so it means that all the areas from January up until March will be paid in the month of March I'm excited for 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 this um, news because again you know in in, in all the fights right there were some great 
um, ideas that came out from different political campaign um, parties, right? So it would be nice. I, I always say that no matter how the fight is going during campaign, yeah. when the part of governance come, right, it would be nice that <coughs> you pick, you know, some of ideas, these great ideas. ideas that came out on, from manifestos of other parties and all of that and implement. So this is a good thing, you know, uh, that I, I thought to, to just mention it. So on that note, we'll take a break. When we come back from the break, let's discuss the aftermath of the gubernatorial elections and all the tribal um, bigotry and all of that that went on. I want to find out how we all can heal from it and just move on. Stay with us. We'll be right back.